All right. Well, hey, as we begin to turn to God's word, I've got a qu- question for you today as we start out. Have you ever not done something that you should have done? Right? Have you ever known that you should do something, but you didn't do it, and in the process, you actually missed out on something else? In 1997, Britton and I uh, bought our first house. We had lived in apartments for the first six years of our marriage, and then we moved into this 980-square-foot bungalow that was bigger than any apartment that we had ever lived in. And if you've ever made that move, you know that often what comes with more space is, you know, well, a lot of times we accumulate junk, but when you come from an apartment that's very small, you move into a house that's very big, it's like, wow, we got all this space, right? We had the upstairs, which was bigger than our apartment, and the downstairs, which was fully finished, family room, another bedroom, uh, a bathroom, and we didn't know what to put in all of these rooms that we had. So as we were moving in, I decided, hey, you know what, it would be wise if we didn't clutter the upstairs with all of the boxes that we have, all the things that we're moving into the house. And so I convinced Britton to let me move all of the boxes that we didn't need right away into the basement of the house, into the family room, and there they sat. And every day I would go down into the family room, walk through it, see this stack of boxes because I was going to the shower in the bathroom that was in the basement because that was the only shower in the house. And so I'd walk by these boxes to my shower and then after my shower I'd walk back past these boxes upstairs and I would think to myself, hmm, I should unpack those. (laughs) But then I would think, hmm, not today. Over the course of that time that the boxes were in the basement, Britton would say to me, hey, maybe we should unpack these boxes today. And I would say, No, let's not. This went on for a year. All of these boxes in the basement, just sitting there, waiting to be unpacked. And then one day, I began to look for something that I'd had before the move, but hadn't seen since the move. And that's when I realized it was downstairs in those boxes. So what do you think I did? I unpacked all of those boxes. I had been missing something all of that time, and I didn't realize it until I unpacked the boxes. We're wrapping up a series today that we've called Everyday Rhythms. And in this series, we've been talking about five simple practices that you can do every day to engage in the mission of God. Five simple ways that you can bless the people around you. They are begin with prayer, listen with care, eat together, serve with love, and share your story. And you know, some of us over the last number of weeks have actually begun to experiment with this, but some of us haven't. And today, in the time we have together, I want to talk to you about something we're missing out on when we don't engage in the blessed practices. You see, there is a box waiting for you to unpack it. It's sitting there in your life, and because you haven't unpacked it, you're actually missing out on something. You see, here's the bottom line. When we fail to bless, we miss out on the presence of God in our lives. Let me explain why I say that. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew 28. We're gonna look at verses 16 to 20. And you may be familiar with this passage. You may have heard people like me stand on stages like this and talk about these verses. We often refer to it as the Great Commission. If you're not familiar with this passage, this passage takes place sometime after the death of Jesus. When Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins and my sins, And it takes place sometime after the resurrection of Jesus, after he resurrected, proving that he is who he said he is and that there is truly forgiveness for sins and new beginnings, new life for us. And this passage takes place after all of that. And it says this in verse 16, it starts off, it says, then the 11 disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some of them doubted. This passage begins with the word then. Some translations use the word but. This is a conjunction. This means that everything that is following in verse 16 is connected to what happens before. The author wants us to see that this great commission is connected to what happens immediately before that. So the question is, what happens immediately before? Well, immediately before, we find out that the guards who had been posted to the tomb of Jesus because Jesus died on the cross and was resurrected on the third day and in between, the Jewish leaders who'd had Jesus arrested, wrongfully convicted and convinced the Romans to put him to death, hired Roman soldiers to come and stand at his tomb because they believed that somebody would come and steal the body of Jesus and then claim Jesus was resurrected. 
And so what we see happening immediately before the Great Commission is that these guards have gone into Jerusalem. It says in Matthew 28, 28 it says, uh, some of the guards went into the city and told the leading priests what had happened. And if we skip ahead a few verses, it says, so the guards accepted the bribe and said what they were told to say. You see, what happened was the leading priest said, you know, here's what we want you to say happened. Now the guards, they had seen the angels at the tomb. They had seen that Jesus was gone. They knew, I mean, these are mighty Roman soldiers. And some fishermen from Galilee are really gonna come and beat up some mighty Roman soldiers and steal the body of Jesus? No. And so these Roman soldiers, they knew what happened, but they went in to the leading priest, and the leading priest said, well, instead of telling the truth, why don't you tell this story? That overnight, someone came, beat you up, rolled away the stone, stole the body of Jesus, and now they're claiming that he's resurrected, when really he's still dead, but the body's missing. And these guards took the bribe. They took the bribe and they began to tell that lie. In fact, the author says that their story spread widely amongst the, amongst the Jews and they still tell it today. Uh, Matthew, the author of what we're reading, wants us to know that decades later, when he begins to write his account of the life of Jesus, decades later, that this lie that was started by the guards is still being spread widely amongst people that Jesus isn't really alive. And Matthew is an author, he puts this right before the Great Commission. For those of you who don't know what the Great Commission is, the Great Commission is Jesus' commandment to go and make disciples. And I think Matthew has a purpose in doing this. You know, we often think of the book of Matthew ending with a charge, with a challenge, like go and make disciples. But I think it really ends with a question who will you be like? You see, I think Matthew's intent in putting this, ju- this uh, conjunction here is that we would look at the story of the guards, look at the lies that they told, how they hid the resurrection of Jesus, and then we would look at the disciples and realize that they began to proclaim the resurrection of Jesus. And Matthew's desire is for us to finish his book and say, who will you be like? Will you proclaim the resurrection or will you hide it? And so the question I think you and I need to consider today is, is your life proclaiming the resurrection or hiding it? Now, we're not like the guards. We don't go around lying, creating stories about the resurrection, but often we hide the resurrection just like those guards did. We hide it when we go about our days without the resurrection of Jesus having an impact on anything that we do or say. The resurrection of Jesus proves that he is the son of God, that he has power over life and death, that your sins are forgiven. Tell me, does your day reflect that truth? Because if it isn't, you're hiding the resurrection because this is the most meaningful event in your life. And I think what Matthew wants us to realize is that you and I, we are meant to live differently. We're not meant to live like the rest of the world. We're not meant to live like the guards, that we are meant to live differently. We're meant to live in such a way that every action, every word, every thought that we have proclaims the glory of the risen Jesus that declares the resurrection. Is this your life? Matthew writes that the disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some of them doubted. And it says, Jesus came and told his disciples, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. The disciples go to the mountain where Jesus is. They refuse to be like the guards. They go to this mountain and Jesus is there and they surround Jesus and it says they begin to worship him (laughs) because that's what happens when you encounter the risen Jesus. That's what happens when you have a true encounter with Jesus. You begin to worship him because you realize how great he is. You realize what he has done for you and worship orients your life around him. Worship makes it so that we put Jesus first in everything in our life. And so they worship him because they have realized who he truly is. 
and what he has done for them. But listen to how Jesus responds. They're worshiping him, and Jesus doesn't say to them, oh, this is really good, bring it on, let's build a huge cathedral. You know, let's get some bands in here, let's get a big LED wall, let's get a multimedia presentation, and let's just fill this place up. He doesn't say that. Jesus, in the midst of their worshiping, he says, go. He says, go and make disciples. You know, oftentimes today as Christians, and, and I know I'm guilty of this, is we make all of our Christian experience, all in our encounter of Jesus, all about Sunday morning at 9 or 11 a.m. And everything that we are focuses on this time and worshiping Jesus. But Jesus says to his disciples as they're worshiping, go. And worshiping Jesus should always lead to the going and making of disciples. It, worshiping Jesus is never the end point. It is always the motivation to go. Jesus tells us not to give up on worshiping together. In Hebrews, he says, don't give up on meeting together as some have done, but continue to meet together so that you may spur each other on to good works. You see, worship's intent is always to focus our hearts on Jesus and spur us on into the mission of Jesus. It should always lead to the going. We are a church that gathers and worships, but then we are to be a church that scatters to all of the places where we live, learn, work, and play and be people who bless the nations. You see, you are meant to worship and to bless. You are meant to worship and make disciples. Tell me, is your life leaning one way or the other? Because it's not an either or. Making disciples, it's not reserved for a select few. The Uber volunteer or the paid staff. Actually, making disciples, Jesus says this to everyone, including those who doubted. Did you catch that part? It says that the disciples worshiped Jesus and some doubted. Some doubted? And every single one of them, the ones that were completely engaged in worship and the ones that were like, I don't think that's him. All of them, Jesus said, go and make disciples. And friends, if he said it to all of them, he's saying it to all of us. You see, you are meant to worship and make disciples. And Jesus says, go and make disciples of all nations, not nations as in political entities or, or places with boundaries, but actually people groups. That's what nations mean in the scriptures. Go to all people and make disciples. You know, through this series, we have talked about Genesis chapter 12 and a man named Abram. We've talked about how God made Abram a promise. He said to Abram, I will bless you, and through you, I will bless all the nations of the world. And we've talked about how this promise to Abram is actually something that's inherited by every generation after Abram, including by all of the Christians who begin to give their life to Jesus. That this is a promise that's inherited by you and me. And we've talked about how in this promise there's two parts to the promise. We've called it the top part and the bottom part. On the top part is the promise that you are blessed that you are blessed, that God has blessed you. He's blessed you with his presence. He's blessed you with wealth. He's blessed you with uh, property. He's blessed you with relationships. He's blessed you in many ways that I'm not even gonna be able to name today, but he has blessed you. And God blesses you not because you are so special. You are special to him, but so is everybody else. And God blesses you not because he loves you more than anybody else. God blesses you because he loves everybody else too. And that's the top part is you're blessed. The bottom part is you are blessed to bless others. And so God blesses you because he loves you and he loves everybody else and he wants you to bless everyone else. That's the promise of Abram. The promise that's passed down to you and to me today. And I don't know if you noticed this in Matthew 28, 19 and 20, but it follows the same sort of pattern that promise is repeated using different words. And there's a top part and there's a bottom part. 
You might have missed it because the top part is actually spoken last and the bottom part is spoken first. The top part is I will be with you always. You see, Jesus has said to his disciples, and this includes you and me, that he will be with us always, that he will bless us with his presence. This is the top blessing that you and I have as disciples or apprentices of Jesus. The bottom part is go and make disciples of all nations, teaching and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the top and the bottom part. And we love that top part, don't we? Jesus is with me. But we, hmm, I don't know. We don't always engage in that bottom part. And throughout this series, we've talked about how we need to be bottom line blessers. Being a bottom line blesser is about making disciples. You see, when you make disciples, you bless. And you know what, this idea of making disciples, this can seem overwhelming. Even to someone like me with multiple years of post-secondary education in this stuff. And this is why we've talked about these five simple practices. Begin with prayer, listen with care, eat together, share, serve with love, share your story. Because when you engage in these five simple practices, you know what you're doing? You're making disciples. And these are five things that you can do. And friends, you and I, we are meant to make disciples. And when we make disciples, we bless. We bless the people around us. So tell me, are you being a blessing? Are you blessing those around you because Jesus has blessed you? You know, there's a great truth here. You know, oftentimes we come to places like this, we engage in worship services like this because we want to encounter the presence of Jesus more. Can I tell you something? The presence of Jesus is found in making disciples. This is what he says. Go and make disciples. And as you go, I will be with you. So if you want more of Jesus in your life, make disciples. Be a blessing to the people around you. Engage with these five simple practices. So how do we respond to what we have heard today? Well, I think the challenge for you and for me as we wrap up this series is to engage in the simple practices, the five blessed practices. To actually say, I'm gonna do one of them, at least one of them, every single day. I'm gonna begin my day with prayer and pray for the people who are far from God and close to me. I'm gonna begin to listen with care to the people around me, the people I pass, and the people I have permanent relationships with. I'm gonna be daring and ask someone to have lunch with me. And I'm gonna look for the kingdom of God, the opportunities to bring the kingdom into that meal. I'm gonna serve with love, serve people at their greatest point of need, which is often not easy for me and I'm gonna share my story, my story of what Jesus has done for me. And when we do this, friends, you know what happens? We make disciples. Will you go and bless? Will you commit to saying, I will make one of those five practices, I will make sure that I do at least one of them every single day. And when you do, do you know what happens? You begin to speak the name of Jesus into their lives. When you are praying for the person, you are speaking the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is all of his character, all of his power, all of his person. And you speak the name of Jesus into the life of the person that you wanna bless when you pray. And when you listen with care, listening to the Holy Spirit, you speak the name of Jesus because Jesus was an amazing listener. And you speak the name of Jesus into their life and things begin to change. When you eat with someone, when you eat, create space in your lives to share life with someone who doesn't know Jesus. You speak the name of Jesus into their life. When you serve with love at someone's greatest point of need and your least amount of ease, you speak the name of Jesus in their life. And when you share your story, you speak the name of Jesus, not only in their life but in your own. And friends, this is what we need to do in this world. Because Jesus is the one that can fix all of the problems in this world. And you and I, we have been blessed with his presence. 
Now it's time to go and to bless in the places where we live, learn, work, and play. We're going to wrap up our service in a little bit of a, a different way. We want to give you a chance to respond to what you've heard this morning in a physical way. You know, we want to invite you to make this summer a summer of blessing. You see, we believe that Jesus has placed every single one of us in unique places around the capital region and beyond. And there's an opportunity for every single one of us to bless the people around us, to make disciples. And so, just as Jesus on that mountain that day commissioned his disciples to go and make disciples to go and bless, we wanna commission you to do that. In just a moment, Pastor Lisa and I are gonna identify different groups of people or different sectors of our community. They're represented by the chairs on the stage here. And when we call out the group that you identify with or the sector that you are a part of, I'm gonna invite you to stand and to receive a blessing and a commissioning to go and make this a summer of blessing. And when you do stand, one of the ways that you can just posture your heart to receive, if you're comfortable, is just opening your hands in front of you, just like this. Because we believe that Holy Spirit is actually going to impart a blessing, and so to posture our hearts to receive, sometimes taking a physical posture is helpful. So when we begin to pray over these different groups or sectors, for anyone that applies to you, we'd invite you to stand as we pray that blessing. <clears throat> Once we've prayed, you can feel free to sit and just in the posture of, of heart, just join us in prayer for the next group of people that we're praying for. And we also want to let you know that you can stand up for any one of these that apply to you. So there could be many that you are receiving today. And that's exactly what we want. So the first group is represented by this chair. These are those people spending their days nurturing and parenting children. Those who have retired after making a positive contribution to the world those who are needing or seeking employment, and those on long-term disability. Will you please stand? We bless you in the name of Jesus. May your days be filled with hope and your hearts be filled with joy. May you realize and recognize that Jesus is with you every moment of your day. May everyone who encounters you ask the reason for your hope and joy, and may you with boldness respond by speaking the name of Jesus into their life. Now go and bless those you meet on the street, in the store, and in the park. Go and make your home into a city on a hill where the nations find blessing. Amen. You may be seated. Next, we're gonna pray for people who are a part of the education sector. So this includes all faculty and staff from preschool right up through graduate programs who are investing in the next generation. It also includes all students from preschool through to graduate studies who will improve and strengthen our society. So if this applies to you, I would invite you to stand. We bless you in Jesus' name to walk in truth that is built on the solid foundation of God's word, whether you're a student, a teacher, or an administrator. In Proverbs chapter nine, verse 10, we read that the fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. And we bless you to live out of true wisdom as you grow in your knowledge and experience of the Lord in your life. May you carry the very restorative presence of Jesus in and through you as you walk in godly and courageous wisdom in these days where biblical truth is so vehemently challenged. Now go and bless all those in your spheres of influence and may you know the delight of God over you as you actively live in his truth and stand on his word and may others experience his truth as good news through you. Amen. You may be seated. If you are part of the trades, the skilled workers actively practicing their craft to construct, maintain, and better our homes, building roads and infrastructure, I invite you to stand at this time. So we bless you in the name of Jesus. May the peace of Jesus rest upon you, and may the love of Christ exude from you. May the labor you do each day bring you joy as you realize that God has gifted you as he did the artisans who built the tabernacle in Moses' day. May your craft and your skill continually reflect the genius and beauty of the creator. May those you work with and for see Jesus in you and in your work. 
Now go and bless those you work with as you seek to serve with love. May the kingdom come as you share your story. May the Spirit lead you each step of the way. Amen. Now we're going to bless those of you who are part of our health care, those who serve the public by administering and delivering services and programs to help manage sickness and to keep us all healthy and well. So if this applies to you, please stand. We bless you in Jesus' name with the strength and compassion to care for people at their most vulnerable. May the mercy and peace of Christ minister in and through you as you walk with people through some of the most challenging and trying times of their lives. May his love and his presence be felt by all who come under your care. May the restorative presence of Jesus hold you steady and strengthen your heart. Now go and bless. And as you do, may you be strong and courageous as the Lord commanded Joshua in Joshua 1 verse 9, knowing that God is with you wherever you go, in every appointment, every consultation, every decision, and every situation. And may the people you encounter each day experience the love of God through you. Amen. You may be seated. If God has placed you in public safe safety, people who serve our community by creating a safe and peaceful society from first responders to corrections, emergency services to armed forces. Will you please stand at this time? May the Lord bless you and keep you in his hand. May the enemy of your soul be bound and may those forces, whether human or spiritual, that seek to harm you be kept from doing so in Jesus' name. We bless you in Jesus' name with gentleness, strength, and power, disciplined by love. As you encounter those in need, may you hear clearly the whisper of the Spirit and respond with boldness. For the Lord is with you. Now go and be a blessing to the communities you serve. May you clearly model the love and power of Christ to everyone you meet. Amen. And now the public sector. This includes all employed by any level of government, providing necessary services in a broad variety of jobs to assist citizens of our nation, our province, and our city. If this applies to you, please stand. We bless you in Jesus' name with grace to engage the multitude of tasks you are responsible for, as well as the people you interact with each day with the love and wisdom of Jesus. May people experience your good deeds, as Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, and be drawn to praise our Heavenly Father. May you be strengthened by Holy Spirit to find fulfillment in all that has been entrusted to you, big and small. And may you be encouraged as you partner with God in various ways to be salt and light in the uniqueness of how he invites you to share his love with others. Now go and bless, bringing the love and joy of Jesus to those you engage with each day as they experience Jesus very practically and winsomely through you. Amen. If you're in the agricultural sector, farmers and those who work hard to produce the food that goes on our tables, will you please stand? May Jesus bless the work of your hands. May the Lord multiply your harvest. May he protect you from the many dangers around you and may no harm come to you or anyone you work with. May you be continually reminded of the master who sows the seed of the gospel everywhere he goes and who invites you to be a worker in his harvest field. Now go and make disciples, seeding the gospel into every relationship and every encounter you have. Go into the harvest field that God is inviting you into. Amen. And small business. This applies to those who own and work in companies and businesses that provide helpful and essential goods and services that are integral to the development of our community. So this applies to you, please stand. 
We bless you in Jesus' name with creativity and passion to see your business as a unique opportunity to live in and invite others to experience the now available kingdom of God. We bless you to be people of exceptional integrity and honest practices who provide services and workmanship that exalts the name of Jesus and helps to draw others into a real-time experience of his heart for them. Just as Lydia in the book of Acts allows her business to be a tool of advancement for the kingdom of God, may the winsome fragrance of Jesus draw people to your business and may they experience Jesus in you, bringing them hope, comfort, as well as provision. Now go and bless, and as you do, may people receive much more than they even knew they needed as they experience Jesus and the kingdom of God that is now available for them through you. Amen. If you're involved in the private sector, and by that we mean those employed by mid to large size companies, non-governmental agencies, in a range of diverse jobs to deliver important goods and services to our society, would you please stand? We bless you in the name of Jesus with wisdom and discernment. May the work you do be a delight to you because you are working in the presence of God. May the Spirit lead you through your day and may he speak words of encouragement and affirmation in the hardest of moments. May he fill you with joy that cannot be explained or contained. Now go and step into the mission Jesus is inviting you into for he has put you where you are for a reason. Go and bless the nations. Make disciples. Join him, for he loves you. Amen. For nonprofit and charity workers. So all those employed by an organization that furthers a social cause, provides a public benefit, or works towards community development. This applies to you. Please stand. We bless you in Jesus' name with the strength and perseverance to not grow weary in doing good, as the Apostle Paul encourages us in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. May you be filled to overflowing with compassion, kindness, and discernment as you seek to help in practical and tangible ways those who, some of, who are some of our most vulnerable. As you directly seek to address important issues that impact people who are often marginalized in a real way, May you keep your eyes fixed on Jesus and your heart rooted and grounded in his love that you may receive new strength day after day to meaningfully partner with Jesus in this very important work. Now go and bless and may people's hearts be comforted, strengthened, and encouraged as they experience the love of God through your practical love and care for them. Amen. You may be seated. If you're involved in the service industry, by this we mean all those employed in leisure, logistics, retail, restaurants, transportation, tourism, or another industry that provides products and services to others. Will you please stand at this time? May you know the deep love of the Father, that he delights in you. May you live a life worthy of your calling, pleasing him in every way and knowing that the service you provide is a spiritual act of worship. May the Spirit produce the fruit of gentleness, kindness, and patience in your soul, and enable you to serve others like Jesus, who, knowing completely who he was, could get up from the table and take the place of a servant, washing his disciples' feet. May you be like Jesus and root your identity in your relationship with the Father. May you be like Stephen and Philip who were filled with the Spirit and chosen to serve and in doing so, in serving sacrificially, led many to Jesus. Now go and bless others and continue the mission of Jesus by serving, revealing the love of God in everything you do. Amen. The arts. So all the creatives among us who work with their hands and hearts in the performing and visual arts. So this includes authors, and actors, musicians, painters, sculptors, and many others. If this is you, please stand. We bless you in Jesus' name to share the beauty, 
majesty and grandeur of God through the unique gifts he has given you. As you fill a hurting world with melodies that soothe and colors that awaken, images that resonate deep within and objects that bring joy and a sense of being known. And as you tell stories that inspire or capture sacred moments that bring wonder, may you know the delight and affirmation of our creator God, the one through whom your exquisite creativity comes. And as people experience your gifts of creativity, May the Lord draw them more deeply into a real-time experience of his love for them, his heart for them, as well as the healing, wholeness, and restoration he offers to them. Your way of seeing the world and expressing truth matters. Now go and bless, knowing that you partner with God uniquely to help people see and experience him. And this deeply delights his heart. Amen. Well, did we miss a category? Did we miss your category? Or maybe you missed your category. I'm gonna invite you to stand. I'm gonna invite everybody to stand at this time, actually, and receive this one final blessing. And if we missed your category, this is for you, but this is for also all of us. We bless you in the name of Jesus, the Master, who knows all and sees all who has gifted you and called you for such a time as this. May Jesus multiply your efforts and greatly enhance your abilities. May you see kingdom opportunities in everything you do, and may you respond with bold and confident actions. Jesus invites you to cast your net to the other side of the boat today. Though you have fished all night, a catch of a lifetime is waiting. So go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them in everything Jesus has commanded in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.